So let's go ahead and get started. We don't have too much time together. We get these 30 minute sessions because we are trying out a new format. Uh, now for page duty 101, we've broken up the key fundamental topics that you might need to learn about into four parts. Today, we are going to continue with setting up the PagerDuty user account. Yesterday, we did a quick introduction to PagerDuty and we took a look at how we can respond to incidents. Now we're gonna actually configure some of the pieces that will allow us to do that. For anybody who's just joining us, the four parts are not mandatory. The goal was really to give you these separate sessions so we could delve a little deeper into certain topics, but also allow you to join for whatever part of your account you're trying to configure right now. This is part two of our four part series. Um, so today we will be focusing on adding users and personalizing the page user profile. And again, um, thinking about how these different steps will help you when it comes to responding to instance. At the end of today's session, I will provide details on um, what actions you will be able to take uh, next, what we would recommend that you take next. And also thinking about if you um, are going to attend sessions three and four, what those topics are going to be. Now, if you do have questions, please feel free to post those questions in the chat. I will check that periodically um, in hopes that I can, I can address those key questions in a timely fashion. And with that, I'm gonna kick Pick us off. Again, quick introduction. My name is Camden Louie. I'm a senior technical trainer with the PagerDuty University team. I am based in our San Francisco office. So if you're in the area or if you ever come through San Francisco, please do let me know. I would love to see you here. I'd love to host you here in our office. Um, and so hopefully we can meet up in person someday soon. Now, for today's session, I wanted you to get an idea of what we're gonna cover over the next three topics, uh, the next three sessions. So for today's session, we are setting up our users, uh, adding our users and setting up our user profiles. For tomorrow's session, we're going to be looking at on-call schedules and escalation policies. And then for day four, we're going to be configuring services and integrations. But let me um, just set the stage here before we hop into the platform. I wanted to take a look at the user roles that are available to us and the permission levels that you should understand in PageDuty. Now we have what we call an enterprise grade permission model. And there is some configuration that needs to be done in order to ensure that your users have the right level of permissions so that they can do what is required of them in their role. So if you are somebody who is helping to manage this PagerDuty account, um, if you have a specific role, meaning a global admin or a, an account owner role, you will be the person who is able to add users. You will be able to ensure that users have that right permission level. Now, as a best practice, we do recommend that users have just enough permission in the platform to do their job. That's the principle of least privilege. So we wanna really think carefully about what is required of our team members. So when we're assigning them permissions, we are giving them the right levels. Now, before I get into more of the details around that, I did wanna outline the two types of roles in PagerDuty, fixed roles and flexible roles. Now, there are four fixed roles in the PagerDuty platform. These are roles where you cannot be given any additional access nor can any of your permissions be removed. So here you can assign one of these roles to an individual person and that is going to be very firm. You can't change anything about these permissions. So at the top here at, at our um, least privileged roles, we have our stakeholders. Now stakeholders at the top are a particular kind of um, license type even. These are folks who are only going to need to see what's going on in the account. They will never need to take action on an incident. So this is particularly, these types of roles are particularly useful for folks like our executives maybe. Um, if we don't want or need our executives to be taking action on an incident, there are circumstances where, you know, I might want my CFO to have access to PagerDuty to be able to see what the incident is, what's going on, but he's never going to need to actually be a responder. 
So I'm going to give that CFO a stakeholder license so he can view what's going on, but cannot take action. Now, down at the bottom of the list, we have our global admin and our account owner roles. These are the two most powerful roles within the account. So this is on the opposite end of the spectrum from those stakeholders. These global admins and account owners will have access to everything in the PagerD account. They can edit, create, delete any of our configuration items, meaning schedules, escalation policies, users, um, services. So again, we wanna be thoughtful about who we give this kind of access to. We don't wanna have too many global admins in an account um, because typically we don't need too many people to have that level of permission. There is only one account owner in an account. So do take a note that the real, the main difference is that the account owner has access to the billing page and only one person can have this account, uh, this account owner role. So that's the fixed roles. We also have flexible roles. So this is if you have advanced permissions enabled on your PageDuty account, you'll have these flexible roles available to you as well, where I can give somebody one of these roles, but these are roles where you could add or remove particular permissions. So an individual user might have multiple roles that help to define their level of access to, to different objects in PageDuty. So as an example, an individual person could have manager access for certain objects for a particular team that they help to manage, but then they just need responder or even observer level access for the other objects in the account for teams that are not their own team. Now, you don't have to memorize these different definitions. All of this information can be found in our PagerD knowledge base. If you go to support.pagerd.com and you search for, um, let's, I'll say advanced permissions right now. This will take you to a page that outlines these different definitions, um, the different user roles. So let me go ahead and put this in the, uh, in the chat as well, advanced permissions. Do take a look at that documentation if you want to learn more. Um, and, and then we will we'll talk a little bit about how these can get, uh, how these different roles come into play when we're looking at our account in just a moment. Now I wanted to show you one visual just to represent those flexible roles. So at the base level, you can give somebody a specific role. For example, I would wanna give people the least amount of permission that they need. So I would probably give something like an observer level role. This means they can see what's going on across the account, but they cannot take action. Now for my user, if they are part of team A and they are an active responder on team A, I'm going to want to give them responder permissions for their specific team. So in the end, the way the permissions all stack together, Anything related to team A, they have responder permissions for. Anything else within the account, they're still going to just be an observer. Okay, now with that, I'm gonna go into my PagerDuty demo account here. Um, this is just a, an example account. It is not going to be exactly what you see, but it should be very similar looking. Now here, I've landed on my incident dashboard, that's great. But we're not worried about instance today. Right now, we're going to go into the people menu to select users from that directory. All right, so here we can view all of our existing users. I can search for them by name. I can filter my view of the users using Teams, if I have Teams on my account. So if I only wanted to see, to see the users who are part of my customer support team, I would filter it down and it would sh show me just the 31 users who are part of that team. Um, I could search for tags. If you've created tags for your account, I could also view a user based on the particular base role that they were assigned. So let's say I have, um, I know there are some stakeholders in my account, I just don't know who. I could search for that stakeholder base role and view exactly who is um, assigned that role. Now, what I wanted to show you today though, is how you can add a new user. And I'm going to manually add a new user, just for clarification's sake. I'll talk about how you can upload larger lists in a moment. To add a user, you can click on this button that says add users up here in the top right. Again, you must have a global admin or account owner level of permission in order to take this action. 
Um, let's say I have a new user. Um, Winky has just joined our team. And so I'm going to put Winky's email address in here. I'm going to use a fake email address. I then choose what kind of license type I want to use. Is she going to be a stakeholder or is she going to be a full user? In this case, let's go ahead and say Winky is going to be a full user. What kind of base role do I want to give her? Now, again, I mentioned we want to give people the least amount of permission that they need in order to do their job. Winky is just one of my responders. So for the base level role, I'm going to give her an observer base level role. And then within her team, I could assign additional res uh, response or privileges if needed. I can choose to add her to a specific team if I needed to right now. I don't have to add the team right now. I can always do that later. Let me just click add. And now we can see that Winky has been added as a new user in my account. So an invitation has been sent to her and we are going to wait for her to accept that invitation. Now, one thing to note is that we have those most commonly, um, I would say the most commonly seen roles, the most commonly used roles are the observer, responder, and manager roles. Um, because again, they're flexible, which means that it's easy to give and take um, permissions away. So do keep that in mind as you're thinking about what base role you might want to assign to a user. And the other thing that I mentioned is this is a manual action here. There are going to be circumstances where you won't want to manually add your users, especially if you have, say, more than a handful of users to add to your account. So you do have the ability to bulk add users via an, a CSV file. You can use our APIs or Terraform. I'm going to paste a link into the chat that allows you to follow some instructions to um, access our scripts that will allow you to import multiple users. All right, so pretty quick and easy in order to add users. We try to make it as self-explanatory as possible. Um, this is, again, something that a global admin or a, an, an account owner would have access to. Once a user has been added to the PagerDuty account, then when they first log in or when you are first accessing the PagerDuty platform, you will want to set up your user profile. Each individual user has their own unique user profile, which is really beneficial, I think, for um, for a lot of teams um, because an individual user can then determine how they personally would want to get notified, how they want to receive a, a page for last, lack of a better term. Um, now, in yesterday's session, I showed you the different notification types, phone calls, SMS, push notifications and emails, as well as the chat tools. Now here in the user profile, which you can find by hovering over your avatar, your picture in the top right-hand corner and selecting my profile from that drop-down menu. So again, I just hovered over my picture and I selected my profile. Now I am accessing my individual user profile where I choose exactly what contact methods I wanna use, um, what notification rules are appropriate. So here under the contact information, I have things like my name. You can see that um, my name is fully populated here. I've also added this additional label that says PDU. That stands for PagerDuty University. That's my team name. Um, this is just an example of what some folks might add to a team name, uh, excuse me, add to their username because there might be multiple people who are named Camden in my account. So I want to ensure that people know I'm the one who's on PDU. I'm not the one who's part of the um, finance team as an example. So in order to edit any of those fields, you just click on that edit icon on the far right, the little pencil on paper, and you can change anything that is sitting in that field there. Now the second field, your title, is going to be a drop down menu when you're first filling it out. We have some of our most commonly seen titles here in the drop down menu, but Technical trainer is not one of those commonly seen titles. So I'm gonna type in technical trainer, hit that return or enter button and click save. So now I've added my title here to the second field. The next field that I want you to take a look at is the time zone field. Now I'm based in San Francisco, as I said. So Pacific time makes a lot of sense for me, but let's say that I move, perhaps I move to Hawaii. 
I would want to make sure that I've chosen the appropriate time zone, updated my time zone. I can refresh my page to see the current time. If I were in Hawaii now, it would be 7.17 a.m. That's the local time. This time zone is going to dictate how I view information across the account. So it's going to dictate what I see when I'm looking at my on-call shifts, how I look at timelines, um, and it also would affect some reporting that might get pulled in the future. So it is important that you check your time zone, make sure that you've chosen the appropriate time zone for you individually, um, and, and select that right here. Then we have our different contact methods. So again, yesterday I talked about the different contact methods that are available to you. I showed you a little um, demo of what each of them looks like or sounds like. Um, really, I think I just showed you what they would look like. So you, again, have the option to add a phone call, uh, a phone number, an SMS number, an email address uh, to enable push notifications. This last section here, the mobile app, is going to be populated when you download the PageDuty mobile app and you log in using your exact same credentials that you use for the web UI. So you'll just enable those push notifications. It will be a quick and easy way of um, seeing what's going on there. All right, and so here we then have the ability to um, look at our different contact methods. Um, I have a phone number, an SMS number, an email that I've added here to my account. So I would always recommend having one contact method for each of these channels at a bare minimum. So at least one phone number, one SMS, one email address, and getting that push notification set up. Once you've entered your contact information, it's very easy to do that by clicking on that add phone number button, type in the country code. Let's say I have a UK mobile device. This is a fake phone number I'm entering here, but I'm just giving you an example of what that um, process would look like. I can then choose a categorization to tell me if it's going to be a mobile device, um, a home number. I can choose other if I wanna type in my own label. So let's say this is my UK mobile. I can then click save. Um, and so you can see that this is not a real mobile contact method. Um, so I don't need to add that right here, but you should be able to add multiple phone numbers, SMS numbers, email addresses. Um, and then I always recommend using this test button. So let me click on test. A test notification has been sent. And sure enough, I'm seeing that test notification here on my mobile device. Uh, I got that push notification so I can see and hear what a notification would look like for any of these different contact methods. All right. So this is a great way of, um, of seeing what's going on here, um, of ensuring that you are going to be contacted where you personally would best respond to those incidents. And again, we do recommend at least one contact method for each of those channels. And let's see, I'm going to also share with you something called the PagerDuty V card, because this is going to allow you to view information or to save PagerDuty as a contact in your phone, to view the steps that would allow you to, um, to respond to PagerDuty. You would know it was us calling you or contacting you. And then I'm gonna to navigate to this second tab, my notification rules tab. So here in notification rules, I wanted to emphasize, I think I talked yesterday about how we have two different types of incidents, high urgency incidents and low urgency incidents. So high urgency incidents are those critical time sensitive incidents, things that you need to be notified about immediately, you need to be interrupted. You want to work on this incident as quickly as possible. Low urgency incidents are going to be um, less time sensitive. There are things that are also not going to escalate. High urgency incidents will escalate to a backup person. Low urgency incidents are just going to contact the on-call person and then stop notifications. Um, so it is important to think about how you're setting up your notification rules for those two circumstances. High urgency incidents then are going to be things that I want to be pretty noisy. Um, so you can see that I've set up some different notification rules here. Let me click the edit icon so you can see how I did that. Zero minutes after the incident is assigned to me, contact me via, and then I have push notification selected here. I get this drop-down menu and I can see all of the different contact methods I'd added on the previous tab. 
I'm going to click save. So immediately after the incident is assigned to me, push to notify me on my iPhone. If I do not acknowledge the incident, then PagerDuty will contact me using one of my backup notification methods. So one minute later, I would get a phone call to my mobile device. If I don't acknowledge the incident there, a minute later or a minute after that, two minutes after the incident is assigned to me, I would receive another phone call to my mobile device. The other reason why I've set this up like this, where I get one phone call and then a second phone call a minute later, is so that I can override do not disturb. So if you ever use do not disturb on your mobile device, um, this is something that would allow you to best um, override that. You save PageDuty as a contact in your phone using that PageDuty V card that I mentioned a moment ago and that I posted in the chat. And you would be able to um, then override that do not disturb by receiving a second phone call within a three minute period. I've also set it up so a minute late or two minutes later, four minutes after the incident is assigned to me, I get a text message, then I get another push notification, I can get an email, any of those contact methods that I had previously set up. I can add additional rules here. Now, when we are looking at escalation policies in tomorrow's session, do keep in mind that there is an escalation timeout that you should be aware of that will help influence how you set up your rules. But for right now, I will just say as a best rule of thumb, set up your rules in what we call a waterfall method. So every one to three minutes, you receive a different notification at a different notification type. And I would build out your notification rules to at least 12 or 15 minutes after the incident is assigned to you. That is in stark contrast to the low urgency incident um, notification rules I've set up down here. Low urgency incidents are not going to escalate to a backup person. They also don't need to wake me up or interrupt me in the same way. So I've just set up one push notification. That is plenty for me. It tells me that there's a problem. I can address it when I am um, able to, when I'm ready to address that. We do have a couple other sections when an incident that I'm subscribed to has a status update, I have the ability to um, receive push notifications or text messages or emails about an incident to receive status updates about an incident, even if I'm not actively responding to that incident. So this is a great tool, very helpful tool that allows you to proactively stay up to date about an incident. And so you can set up email, push notification or text message. We're saving those phone calls just for the instance when they're assigned to you. Um, so just set up your email, your push notification, your text message for these subscriber updates. Or before you go on call or off call, you might wanna get a push notification, a text message, an email. This is a great way of just reminding yourself um, before that change in state. Um, before you are going to be taking over for somebody, if you need to prepare for that handoff, whatever you're going to do. So I just wanted to ensure that you were able to see how that is set up. Again, you just choose the number of hours before you go on call or off call, and then you'll see those three notification types. Okay, those are the notification rules that you need to set up. So contact information and notification rules are the key pieces that you need to set up in your individual um, in your individual profile here. Yeah, just to, to really emphasize and reiterate, as soon as you acknowledge the instant, you will stop receiving notifications. So that's a really important thing to understand about this and how it's set up. Great question there. So with a high urgency incident, I would receive my notification. If I get that push notification, I immediately acknowledge the incident. PagerDuty will stop notifying me. PagerDuty will also not escalate. It will not go to my backup person. It will stop the escalation. So that is really important to understand. Yeah, really great point to reiterate there. And then I wanted to just point out the user settings tab. This is the last tab I wanted to show you before um, we, we wrap up for today. Under this user settings tab, you will be able to see your login email and password. So if you're using email and password to get into PageDuty, you will be able to update your login email or your password here. If you are using single sign-on or an identity provider, that is obviously going to be managed through that system. So you won't be able to edit your access here. Um, you can view your team, uh, excuse me, your account role right here under this role menu field. It's not a menu. Under this role field, you'll be able to see what role you have for the account. So in this case, I'm the account owner of my demo account here, um, you might see responder, observer, you might see something like limited user, depending on the account that you have.
and the platform of pager you're using. Lastly, we have this calendar field that I wanted to point out. This calendar field allows you to use a web cal feed um, to add your on-call shifts to your personal calendar. This will update dynamically. So as changes are made in PageDuty, you would also be able to um, view those, view those um, shifts in your personal calendar and those updates in your calendar. There's also an iCalendar file. I did want to note that the iCalendar file is static, so it would need to be downloaded periodically. You'd need to come back in here and download it to ensure you get the most up-to-date information. Now, for those of you who have those advanced permissions enabled, um, as I mentioned earlier, permissions and teams is another tab you could check out. This would show me any teams that I'm a part of and what my team role is going to be on that um, particular team. Again, I'm an account owner, so you can't remove any of my permissions. I have at least manager permissions um, for each of those different teams. So it's not the most exciting page to see for me, but if you're part of multiple teams and you have a flexible role, you would be able to see your different team roles right here. Now with that, those are the key pieces of the um, user profile, of um, setting up our profiles that I wanted to highlight with you today. I really appreciate you all being here, asking some great questions. Um, please make sure that you can, of course, log into your PageDuty account and add those users if you have that right team role, um, that right account role. Make sure you have set up your user profile with the appropriate notifications. You are the only person who can set up your user profile to ensure that you can respond in a timely fashion. Um, make sure you save PageDuty as a contact in your phone as well. And we always love feedback. So I talked about this yesterday. We are going to collect feedback at the end of each of our sessions um, because we would love to know what you thought about this new series that we have launched. So please do give us feedback through the survey that I've linked in the chat. I've also pasted some of those key resources that will be available to you. The support.pageview.com um, page, our knowledge base. If you have technical support questions, you can always reach out to our support team, support at pageview.com. If you want to know about additional training, you always have um, pdu at pageview.com. And lastly, for training resources, including um, a recording of these sessions, which will be posted at the end of the week, you will be able to access our PDU portal, university.pagery.com. Now you can also access our um, university portal by navigating here to the, um, in the profile, you'll have your question mark icon. You can access the Pagery University portal via this link as well. So a couple different um, options for you, a number of different resources that are available to you. But with that, I did want to just say a huge thank you for your time and attention. I know we are at the time at the end of our session together, but we hope we will see you tomorrow for setting up schedules and escalation policies. And then, of course, part four on Thursday is going to be setting up our services and integrations. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you then.